Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Lesson number 206, Suratul Ankabut, ayah number 31-44. وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى And when our messengers came to Ibrahim alayhi salam with the good news. In the previous ayat, we learned about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and then about Lut alayhi salam. That how Lut alayhi salam, he also invited his people, but what was their reaction? It was very severe. And they said to him, bring the punishment if you're truthful in your claim, in your threat. And Lut alayhi salam, what did he do? He made dua to Allah. That Rabbin surni, O my Lord, help me against these people who are mufsid. So what happened then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his dua and he sent his angels. Why? In order to carry out the punishment on the people of Lut. However, before they went there, they went to who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا When our messengers came. Rusul is a plural of? Rasul. And remember that Rasul is used for human messenger. A messenger who has been sent to deliver Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message to the people. But over here, Rusul refers to who? The angels. Why? Because these angels, they also brought a message to who? To who? To Ibrahim alayhi salam. And what message was that? Bil Bushra. It was of good news. Bushra is Bashara, which is good news, glad tidings. It is such news that pleases the receiver. Meaning the one who receives that news, he becomes very happy on receiving that news. And what was this good news that Ibrahim was given? Of the birth of his son, Ishaq, and after him, his grandson, Ya'qub. So what happened then? Qalu, they also said. So they gave the good news to Ibrahim and after that, they said to him, that inna muhliku, indeed we are ones who destroy. Muhliku is actually muhlikuna. And it's the plural of muhlik. So they said that indeed we are ones to destroy ahli, people, the dwellers. The dwellers of who? هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ Of this city. What do they mean by this? That we are ones to destroy the dwellers of this city. Which city is this? The city where the people of Lut salam lived, the cities of Sodom. إِنَّ أَهْلَهَا And what's the reason behind that? That indeed its people... Kanu zalimin, they are wrongdoers. Zalimin is a plural of zalim. What kind of zulm were they doing? The people of Lut alayhi salam. Homosexuality. Why is it called zulm? Think about it. The actions that they were committing, such as homosexuality, why are they called zulm? They were doing zulm on the women. And what's the definition of zulm? To place something where it doesn't belong. So they were doing something which was incorrect they were fulfilling their desire how through the unnatural way through the way that went against the fitra but remember that zulm over here it also refers to their kufr because what is kufr what is denial what is rejection of the messenger that is also zulm isn't it and what's the evidence behind that that kufr is zulm wal kafiruna humuz zalimun that the disbelievers, they are the wrongdoers. So, inna ahlaha kanu zalimin. Indeed, its people are zalim. How? By denying their messenger, by doing kufr of their messenger, and also by persisting in their evil deeds. And remember that the injustices that these people were committing, it wasn't just with regards to their fulfillment of desires, but also, as we learned earlier, that they would do qat or sabil. They would also obstruct the way and hinder the travelers. So that was also injustice. So, inna ahlaha kanu zalimin, and this is why they deserve the punishment, and therefore we are going to go and carry this punishment out on them. What do we see over here? That the angels, they came with two missions. And what were they? First of all, to deliver the good news to Ibrahim, salam, and secondly, to also execute the punishment on the people of Lut salam. But before going to the people of Lut salam, they told Ibrahim salam 
about what was going to happen. They informed him. Qala, Ibrahim السلام, he said, in fiha, indeed in it, in what? In that qarya that you're about to destroy, in that qarya is Lutan, Lut السلام. Why did he say that? So that the people are not destroyed. Because even if there is one believer, he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he stays away from those evil deeds, he is doing Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munka. So how can you destroy them? How can you punish them? Inna fiha luta. Qalu, the messengers, the angels, they reply to him that nahnu a'lamu. We are better knowing, meaning we know very well as to biman fiha, as to who is in that city. We know very well who lives in that city. Who are the believers and who are not believers. Who are the zalim and who are not zalim. We know very well as to who is in that city. لَنُنَجِّيَنَّهُ Surely we will definitely save him. لَنُنَجِّيَنَّ From the root letters. نُنْجِيمْ wow, najat, Which is to deliver someone, to save someone from some difficulty, from some calamity. So we are going to save him from this punishment. Him, meaning Lut alayhi salam, wa ahlahu, and also his family. Ahl over here refers to his family. In lamra'atah, except his wife. So him and his family, those who believe, they're all going to be saved. In lamra'atah, except for his wife. Why? She appears to be a believer, but in reality she is not. كانت من الغابرين She will be from those who remain behind. غابرين is a plural of غابر from the root letters. غين با را What does غبار mean? A dust cloud. You can imagine a group of people running through the desert especially, horses, and as they move forward, what do they leave behind them? A dust cloud. And typically when people are traveling, especially as a group in the form of a caravan, they will definitely leave behind them some sort of dust which is flying up in the air. So Rabir is used for the one who remains behind while his friends, they move forward. You understand who Rabir is? Who remains behind in the dust, in the dust cloud while his friends, they move forward. They keep going and he stays behind. And why is it that he remains behind? It's because of his own mistake. It's because of his shortcomings. It's because he did not put in enough effort. So, كَانَتْ مِنَ الْغَابِرِينَ She will be of those who remain behind in the punishment. What do we see over here? That the angels, they bring two news. One is good news and the other is bad news. The good news is for who? Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why? He himself was good. We learnt earlier about all of his sacrifices, all of his efforts, and we also learnt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his reward even in the dunya. Isn't it? He was given his reward even in the dunya for his sincerity, for his efforts, for his hard work, for his obedience, for his loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of that reward was that in his life, he was granted children, and not just children, but also the news of righteous children. And before actually the children were bestowed upon him, he was actually given the good news. Why? Because this is part of happiness. That before you actually receive something, you get the news of receiving it. Because it adds to your delight, it adds to your happiness. And on the other hand, the angels, they also brought bad news. And this bad news was of punishment. But for who? For the people of Lut a.s. What do we see over here? That if a person does good, then he sees its consequences, its good result, even in the dunya. And on the other hand, if a person does evil, then he will see its consequences even in the dunya. Yes, the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reserved for reward and punishment. However, even before that, even before that in the dunya, He shows us the consequences of our actions. And we see over here that Ibrahim a.s. when he receives his good news, does he get so happy about you know, what he has heard and he's so excited that he cannot think about anything else? Is it so? 
No, it's not like that. He receives the good news, and right after that, when the angels tell him as to where they're headed to, Ibrahim a.s., it's as though he forgets about what the angels told him, and now he's concerned about the people of Lut a.s. Think about it. Typically, what happens with us? When we receive some kind of blessing, or some kind of good news, we get so excited, we get so lost in our own enjoyment, in our own pleasure, that we forget about what is more important. We forget about what our mission in life is. Or we tend to completely forget about other people. What was the mission of Ibrahim a.s.? To call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is said that he is the one who sent Lut a.s. to that city. Because remember that when Ibrahim a.s. he left Iraq, along with him, who else came? It was his nephew and also his cousin Sarah, whom he later married. Right? So all of them, they migrated. Ibrahim a.s. he remained in Palestine, but Lut a.s. he went forward. Where? To Sudum. So we see that Ibrahim a.s. he realized what his mission was. And what was that? To help people. To call them to Allah. To save them from a bad end in the hereafter. And we see that he is so concerned about his mission that even when he gets this good news, in his excitement and in his happiness, he does not forget about other people. And in, instead, what do we learn? That he begins to argue with the angels in order to get more time for the people of Lut. And he said that, in nafiha Lut, How can you destroy those people when Lut is still there? So the angels, they replied to him that Lut will be saved. We learn in Surah Hud, ayah number 74 as well. That فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرَّوْعُ وَجَاءَتْهُ الْبُشْرَى يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لوط. And when the fright had left Ibrahim a.s. Why was he frightened? Then the angels, they came in the form of people who were unfamiliar and they refused to eat his food. So he was concerned. He was afraid. So eventually when they told him that no, we are the angels of Allah. And then after that, they gave him the good news. What happened? He began to argue with us concerning the people of Lut a.s. This is how concerned he was. That he cared for others more than he was concerned about himself. Put yourself in that situation. Imagine you've received good news of who? Of a child. What happens to people when they find out they're expecting? That's it. All their work is gone. All of their commitments finished. Their work, they don't give much importance to it anymore. I am expecting. I am ill. I am diseased. I am sick. And this is it. Everything. Bye. And I'm only concerned about my own self. This is not the way of the believer. You see, everything, everything has its own level and it deserves its own importance. And the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the work of calling people to Allah, the work of spreading this Quran, it is the most important task that you have at your hand. The most important task, in no matter what way you're involved with it. So, Anything that happens in your life should not become a hindrance in doing that work. Yes, it might become challenging at some point. However, we should not become so concerned with ourselves that we forget what is more important. If you think about it, the Sahaba, they endured so much physical difficulty, physical pain, whenever they went through so many hardships, when they went to the expedition of Tabuk, how difficult that journey was. When Bilal, he would lie on the desert sand of Makkah in the heat and heavy stones would be placed on his chest and still he would say, Ahad, what do we see? That if a person is spiritually strong, if a person has inner strength, it will help him overcome his physical pain. It will help him overcome his physical ailment, his physical state. But if we are weak on the inside, then even the slightest thing is enough to remove us from our purpose. Remember that. I always think that what is it that gives Sahaba the strength to just survive on half a date, one date, all day long? What gave them the strength? What gave them the strength to tie rocks onto their stomachs and keep digging the trench at the Battle of Khandaq? What gave them the strength? Were they more powerful? Were they more mighty? Did they eat more? Did they have multivitamins like we have all the time? Did they sleep for several hours? What gave them the strength? It's the inner strength that you have. 
when you're strong on the inside, when you have spiritual strength, when you have fear of Allah, when you're motivated by the reward that Allah has promised, then no matter what physical state you're in, you will be able to overcome that. Definitely you'll be able to overcome that. So we see Ibrahim a.s. Look at him. And look at the state that he's in. How old was he at this point? He was extremely old. Did he have any children at this point? No. Imagine he had left his family back home in Iraq. He was all alone. He didn't have any children. And he's become so old. And typically at this age, people give up hope of having children. And imagine at this point, he's given the good news of not just a son, but also a grandson. Just try to imagine his excitement, his happiness. When couples are trying to have children for even one year, and they don't have, and after a year they find out how excited they are, how thrilled they are. After five years, after ten years, how happy they are. I want you to imagine the happiness of Ibrahim a.s. But it does not move him away from his purpose. He is still concerned about people. He is still concerned about his mission in life. And this is why his rank was so high. This is why his reward was so great. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded him in this dunya, and he has great reward for him in the hereafter as well. So what does it show to us? That in order to do the work of deen, we need to have the heart like that of Ibrahim a.s. A heart that is filled with concern and compassion and well-wishing for others. That we should come out of ourselves and we should not just be concerned about ourselves and our families and our children and our homes. Yes, they are important, but they're not everything. We need to be concerned about others as well. Only when we have this kind of well-wishing and concern for others, it will help us overcome our own problems, our own challenges. What else do we learn from here? Think about it. Share what you have learned now. Anybody else? What do we learn from this ayah? That if you think about it, life is full of ups and downs, isn't it? You get happy one day, you get sad one day, you get good news one day, you get bad news one day. It's full of ups and downs. One person is leaving, another person is coming. Now just because things are constantly changing in life doesn't mean we get moved away from our purpose. No. A person who has a mission in life, who has a purpose in life, he will stay focused on that no matter what. No matter what he's going through. And if we are motivated by this mission, that this is something, that a transaction that I've made with my Lord, and at the end of it is reward, this is a means of forgiveness for my sins, then a person will be concerned. Then a person will remain focused and he will not get distracted by little, little things. Anything else? It's amazing how it's not just our own you know, happiness that distracts us, but sometimes it's the happiness of other people as well that we get distracted by them from our purpose. It's not that we are getting married, somebody else is getting married, and because of that, we will not do what we're supposed to do. But it's amazing how people who are focused on their mission, even in this dunya, even if it's a dunya thing, then what happens to them? Whether they are getting married, or their child is getting married, or their sister is getting married, what happens to them? They're focused on their work. Focused. They don't get distracted. If you think about it, the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, doesn't it provide us with a better reason to stay more focused on our mission? To be more thankful to Allah? Think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us such a huge blessing, And as a result of that, we don't thank him by doing something for his sake. Is that fair? That's not gratitude at all. It's not gratitude at all. If Allah has given you a blessing, then it's your responsibility that you have to be grateful to him. So it's more of a reason to continue with your work. One more thing that I want you to notice over here is that every time this incident is mentioned in the Qur'an, What is mentioned along with it? That his wife, the wife of Lut, she will remain behind in the Ghabiri. In some way or the other, this is mentioned every single time. What does it show? That a person can deceive others by his appearance, by his outward behavior, but he cannot deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. The wife of Lut, who was she? 
as I told you earlier, that Ibrahim alayhi salam, Lut alayhi salam, and Sarah, they're the ones who migrated from Iraq. Ibrahim alayhi salam married Sarah, but Lut alayhi salam, he went on to the city of Suddum. And it's quite possible that he married her from that city, like she belonged to that city. So, on the outward, apparently she had become a believer. Because no Prophet of Allah would marry a disbeliever. Someone who does not believe in Allah. On the outward she had believed. But on the inside, her loyalties were with who? With her people. Which is why she supported them, which is why she aided them, and which is why she did not wholeheartedly support her husband. So what do we see? That in the dunya, a person can be like this, different on the inside, different on the outside. You understand? And in the dunya, a person will be dealt by what? By his outward behavior. But in the sight of Allah, near Allah, he will be dealt how? According to his batin, according to his inside. We see that Ibrahim salam, he is asking for respite for the people of Lut salam. Why? So that they have some more time. So that they can change. So that they can realize their mistake and change their ways and practices and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the other hand, the wife of Lut salam, she did not obviously want her people to be destroyed, not because she wanted them to change, but because she disagreed with them. She was fine with the way they were. We see that the angels, when they come, they first give good news to Ibrahim salam, And then they give the bad news as well. So whenever you have to give two different types of news to someone, how should you start? With the good news. Just as we have been seeing in the surah that no person will help you on that day. No person. With Allah, no person is going to come to help you. Whether it is your parents or your friends or anybody. Over here we see that the wife of Lut, she was the wife of a prophet of Allah. But just because she was married to him doesn't mean that she was okay. She would be fine. No. She will be held responsible for the way she was. Okay, let's continue. Walamma and when anja'at it came. Who came? Rusuluna, our messengers. When our messengers they came to who? Lutan Lut alayhi salam. So first they went to Ibrahim alayhi salam and then after that they went to Lut alayhi salam. And when they came to him in the form of young, handsome men, what happened? Lut alayhi salam see Abihim. He was grieved because of them. Sia. Sa'a yasu'u. What does it mean? To be evil. To be bad. And over here it gives a meaning of to be sad. So sia. This is fu'ila. Majhul. So he was grieved be him because of them. Why? That these handsome young men have come. And how are my people going to treat them? As I told you earlier. That these people. They committed the crime of qat'ur sabil. Right? And what is that? That even when travelers would come to their city or they would pass by their city, they would commit evil crimes with them. So, Lut salam, he was very, very concerned. He was very sad. He was very worried. وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا And he felt straightened for them in zar'an, in his ability, in his strength, in his capacity. The word daqa is from the root letters ضَاد يَقَافْ ضِيق And ضِيق is used for Narrowness, tightness. So, Baqa, he felt tight. He felt constricted. He felt narrow. Be him for them. For who? For the angels. Or be him against them, meaning against his people. Dharan in strength. Dharan from the root letters. Dhal ra'in. This is a phrase, an expression. And it means to feel unable to do something. To be unable to do something. To lack strength. To not have the ability. So over here, وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا He felt very straightened, very tight, very narrow in his ability to defend the angels and to fight against his people. He didn't know how he could save these travelers from his people. So he felt very uneasy and he felt extremely helpless. So وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا it means as though he felt helpless. وَقَالُوا And they said, the angels when they saw the state of Lut salam, they said to him, لَا تَخَفْ Do not fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ And do not grieve. So over here, 
They told him that we are the angels. And we learn elsewhere as well that لَن يَصِلُوا إِلَيْكَ that the angels, they told Lut that we are angels and they can never harm us, they can never reach us, they can never do anything to us. So they comforted Lut La تَخَفْ وَلَا تَحْزَن Do not fear and do not worry. تَخَفْ تَخَفْ is from خَا وَوْفَ And what is خَوْف? Fear. But what kind of fear is it? It is about the past or the present or what? It's about the future. Right? So لَا تَخَفْ Do not fear that they will harm us. Do not have this fear that these people are going to harm us in some way. Wala tahzan and do not worry. Tahzan is from Ha Zai Noon. And what does Huzan mean? To be sad, to be grieved. About what? About the past and also about some calamity, some difficulty that has struck a person. So La Tahzan do not grieve that you are unable to help us. You understand? So لا تخف ولا تحزن Don't fear that they will harm us and لا تحزن that you cannot help us. Don't worry, do not grieve. إِنَّا مُنَجُّوكَ Indeed, we are ones to save you. Munaju is actually munajuna, And it's the plural of munaji. And who is munaji? One who gives najat, one who saves the other, because najja, yunajji, tanjia, is to save someone, to rescue someone. So, inna munajuka, we are going to save you, from the city, from these people, wa ahlaka, and also your family, illa mra'ataka, except for your wife. Kanat min al she will be of those who remain behind. Remain behind in who? In those people who are being punished. We learn in Surah Hud, ayah 80 to 81, that Lut alayhi salam, Qala, he said, that when the angels were there in the form of handsome young men, and his wife had informed the people, and the people came asking for these men to be handed over to them, Lut said, لَوْ أَنَّ لِي بِكُمْ قُوَّةً أَوْ آوِي إِلَىٰ رُكْنٍ شَدِيدٍ He said, if only I had against you some power, or I could take refuge in a strong support. If only I had some power to fight you people, or if only I had some strong support, through the assistance of which I could, counter what you're doing. So what happened? Qalu, the angel said, Ya Lutu inna rusulu rabbik lan yasilu ilayk. They informed him at that time that, O Lut, indeed we are the messengers of your Lord and they can never harm you. And the angels, they said to him, Inna munziluna. Indeed, we are ones to bring down. Munzilun, plural of? Munzil. And who is Munzil? One who brings down. What kind of noun is this? Ism? Fa'il. From which bab? If'al. Af'ala. Yuf'ilu. If'al. Fahuwa. Muf'ilun. So muf'il. Munzil. Anzala yunzilu inzal. And then from that. Munzil. So indeed we are ones to bring down. What? Ala ahli hadihi al-qariya. Upon the people of this city. Rijizam min as-sama. A filthy punishment from the sky. Why? Bima kanu yafsukun. Because of the crime, because of the sin, because of the sins that they have been committing, because of their crossing limits. This is why we're going to descend upon them rijizam min sama Now what is rijz? Rijz is from the root letters. Ra, jim, zay. And rijz is used for punishment, filthy punishment. And it's used for musibah, or difficulty for a calamity. But basically rijz literally is ittirab. What does that mean? To move. How? To constantly move, to constantly shake, to quiver when a person cannot stand still. And from the same root is rijziya, ash'ar. Ash'ar are what? Poetry. Ash'ar, shir. And rijziya meaning there are such, such verses of poetry that literally shake you. That shake you, that cause you to move, that cause you to take action. And typically, Ridziya Ash'ar, they would be recited at times of war. Why? To motivate people. To give them energy. Because when you're feeling down and all of a sudden somebody's talking about your tribal leader and your great ancestors and your strength, then what happens? Even if you're weak, you will become energetic. So, Ridziya Ash'ar. And from the same root is Rajaz al-Ba'ir. Rajaz al-Ba'ir. What is a Ba'ir? A camel. Rajaza meaning it has become so old, it has become so weak that as it walks, 
the legs they shiver. You understand? Or because it has been heavily laden with burden, that it cannot bear it, and as it walks, its legs, they shiver. They move. So, rids, what kind of punishment is it? Extremely filthy. Extremely terrible. That will not leave anything untouched, that will move everything. And if you think about it, whenever you see something ugly, you know, something that is filthy, something that is very dirty, what happens as you see it? Don't you shudder? Don't you shiver? It causes you to move. Just the thought of it, just imagining it, just seeing it or smelling it, it causes you to move. You move your shoulders, your head, your back, your, your whole body is shaken. So, إِنَّا مُنْزِلُونَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةِ رِجْزًا مِّنَ السماء. Now, what does this ridge refer to? What kind of punishment was this? A rain of stones. And why is it called ridge? Because it was a very severe punishment. Because that is what fell down on them from the sky. And what's the reason behind that? بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Because they used to cross limits. يَفْسُقُونَ is from fisq. And fisq is literally to cross limits. فَسَقَ tamra is when a date has become extremely ripe. And once it has become extremely ripe, what happens? The skin, it bursts. And the date, the fruit, the pulp that is on the inside, it comes outside. And then you see that the skin of the date, it shriveled up, it dries up, it cracks. So fisk is to cross limits. So because they have been crossing limits for a very long time, this is why now the punishment is going to descend on them. And what happened? The punishment was descended on the people and they were destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَا مِنْهَا آيَةً بَيِّنَةً and we have certainly left of it a sign. As what? As a clear evidence. For who? لِقَوْمِ يَعْقِلُونَ For people who use their aql. For people who understand, who use their mind. وَلَقَدْ تَرَكْنَا مِنْهَا What does مِنْهَا refer to? هَا This قَرِيَة So we have left of that city. Meaning some of that city, part of that city. It has been left by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as what? As ayatan bayina, as a clear evidence, as a clear sign. Meaning the city as it was destroyed, but part of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let it remain. Why? So that it becomes an ayatan bayina. But who will take a lesson? لِقَوْمِ يَعْقِلُونَ For people who use their aql. Now how is it an ayatan bayina? How is it a manifest sign? That the remains of the city especially the Makkans, the people of Makkah, as I told you, that there was a trade route over there. And the people of Makkah, even they would take that trade route. And as they would take that trade route, they would witness the remains of these people. So, لِقَوْمِ يَعْقِلُونَ These remains are there, the sign is there, but who will take a lesson? Only those people who use their mind, who reflect. And we learn in Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 137 to 138 as well. That وَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مُصْبِحِينَ وَبِاللَّيْلِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ And indeed you pass by them in the morning and also at night. Then will you not use reason? أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Will you not use reason that these people who used to live here, what happened to them? Why did they finish like this? Why? Who did this to them? And if it can happen to them, can it not happen to anyone else? أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you use your mind? Don't you use your reason? In Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah 76, we learn, وَإِنَّهَا لَبِسَبِيلٍ مُقِيمٍ And indeed, those cities are situated on an established road. And the people of Makkah, the Arabs, as they would travel, they would witness their remains. So, the sign is there, but who will take a lesson? Only the person who uses their mind. Uses their mind for what? In order to reflect that what caused this? And not just scientifically what caused this, geologically what caused this. No. Why did this happen to them? Nations, people as a whole, why did they die? Why did they finish together? If you think about it, typically what happens? One person dies, another person dies, more people come. Isn't it so? But an entire city is wiped out? Entire city? All the people are gone? Why? What did they do? What wrong did they commit? And if it can happen to them, you think it cannot happen to you? 
If you do fisk, if you deny your messenger, if you persist on your wrong actions, it is said about these people, the people of Lut, that how were they destroyed? The Jibreel, he uprooted their towns with his wings, literally. Because remember that Jibreel, how many wings did he have when the Prophet saw him? 600. And he saw him covering the entire horizon. Imagine, covering the entire horizon. So, Jibreel, he lifted these people up, their towns up with his wings from the depths of the earth, and then they were overturned and thrown back. And as they were thrown back, the rijzam min as the shower of stones was sent down upon them. Just imagine. This is why these people are also known as al-mu'tafikat. Wal-mu'tafikata ahwa. The cities that were overturned. Okay, we'll listen to the recitation and then we'll continue. What could be the difference? So what's my understanding? I was thinking the difficulties these Ambiya went through and they were not having as many resources as Sulaiman had. He was like having a big kingdom, many resources, and while he was doing, maybe the task was comparatively easy for him as compared to them. Basically, with regards to the prophets who are known as Ulul Azm, some scholars say Ulul Azmi min al Qusul, where it says in the Quran, all of the prophets of Allah they are Ulul Azm, because min al Qusul min is of bayan, it's not of tabreed. So all of the prophets of Allah they had determination, they were determined, and this is why whatever difficulties they faced, whatever challenges they faced, they delivered the message of Allah to the people. However, other scholars say that Ulul Azmi min al Rusul that min is of tabi'id, so only some prophets of Allah are those of determination. It doesn't mean that the rest of them, they had any less of determination or they are of a lesser degree and rank. Yes, there is differences amongst the messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says himself that tilka rusulu fadalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. Right? So the reason why prophets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam, Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, and Isa alayhi salam, the reason why they are known as Ulul Azm is because they had to face a lot. They had to deal with a lot. As you can see over here, Ibrahim alayhi salam, look at the challenge that he faced in his home, and look at his concern that he had even afterwards. He had so much determination that he wasn't willing to quit on people. He wasn't willing to give up on them. Even when the people had quit, he wasn't willing to quit on them. So this is why they're known as Ulul Azm and also their challenges were more, their difficulties were more and what they accomplished was also very great indeed. And I was thinking that this is a gham he had in his heart that even then he's worried that another messenger he was saying that he's in them. Yes, that we see that Ibrahim salam, he was so concerned for people. Similarly, Nuh salam, he was so concerned for people which is why he did da'wah to them for 950 years. I mean, who does that? You tell someone for nine days, they don't listen, you give up on them. But to have the determination to tell someone for 950 years, that's a big thing. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he endured for so long as well. Musa alayhi salam, he dealt with Fir'aun and he dealt with Bani Israel. Isa alayhi salam, he dealt with the Bani Israel. It's not easy. I was just saying that, like, you know, I give up now, like, you know, I don't want to talk to people anymore because they don't want to listen and all that stuff. But then again, you have this in your heart that, oh my God, like, you know, you really want them to realize the wrong thing that they do. But, like, I mean, I think it's a normal reaction among human beings that it's like, okay, that's it for me. Very true. <laughs> I'm not normally, going to talk anymore. Yes, we tend to give up hope. We become weak and we think that's it. They're not going to listen. Why waste your energies? Why become miserable? But when you look at the example of these prophets of Allah, that even when they are given their good news, they still don't forget their mission. They still are concerned for others. So then this is a source of great motivation. Okay, we'll listen to the recitation. Ahli 
جاءت رسلنا لوطا سيء بهم وضاق بهم ذرعا وقالوا لا تخف ولا تحزن إنا منجوك وأهلك إنا منجوك وأهلك إلا امرأتك كانت من الغابرين إنا منزلون على أهل هذه القرية رجزا من السماء رجزا من السماء بما كانوا يفسقون ولقد تركنا منها آية بينة آية بينة لقوم يعقلون